Uncover the secret to conquering the spiritual attacks in your life. Former Satanist John Ramirez shares these supernatural weapons God gives us to succeed in spiritual warfare. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, everywhere you look today, it seems evil has become bolder from the blatant desire to groom children to the outright denial of truth. We are in a spiritual battle like never before. So how do we fight back and what supernatural weapons do we have available to take a stand for our family and for our loved ones? Well, today with the help of our special guests, we're going to find out. But first joining me on the table is my beautiful daughter in love, Susanna Lamb. Welcome Thank to you. the table. I know you're passionate about what we're going to be talking about. Yes, the name of his book, Fire Prayers. Woo! I love that. Let's go. Dorothy Newton, how are you? I am doing great. You got your ready for the battle yes. oh, yeah. on today. Army hey, your army armor. fatigue. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready. That. I love that. Cindy Johnston, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing good? Yes, I am. Are you ready to do some fire prayers? Fire. I love the title of that book. I do too. Fire prayers. I do too. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, do you like the title Fire Prayers? Yeah, but I like more how you look right now. Ooh. Oh, I, I would have yeah. never thought lilac would be one of your colors, but lilac. you look really good in it. This is like my do. favorite. Any purple, lilac, yeah. purple. Oh, whatever. you are purple. I am. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You like purple too? I love purple. I yeah. still like All purple. shades of it, yeah. yeah. It's gorgeous. All right. It's well, he was you. once, get this, a practitioner of witchcraft and being trained to be a high priest in a satanic cult. It's like kind of hard to believe that goes on here. Yeah. But God had other plans, just like he's got plans for you. And uh, now he is a bold voice for the gospel, and he's here to talk about we can take a stand against darkness. Please welcome our dear friend, John Ramirez. Welcome yeah, back. Thank you, thank you. Having me, oh, wow, hello. exciting. It's so good to here. have you. Yeah, this is better than high school. I told, <laughs> I told, Jonathan, I told, I told John that um, he's from the South Bronx and he talks really fast when he's talking. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, you have to slow down just a little bit because yes. we want to hear Every word of his story is amazing. Well, no one understands the tactics of the enemy to infiltrate our family, our home, quite like John does. And today he's here to talk about the schemes of the enemy and how you can take a stand against them. Before we get into that, I want you to share just a little bit of your story because there are people watching that have never heard your story. And it's hard for us, it's really hard for people to believe that there is a satanic church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, in, and I, the only way I can describe, you know, think about this, I mean, a lot of you hear about angels. Well, if you believe in angels, then you have to understand there are demons. Yeah. If you believe there's a place called heaven, you have to also know there's a place called hell. Mm -hmm. that, and, and the way that we come against all of those things is through the person of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's defeated all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, all you have to do is invite him into your heart, into your life today and everything changes. That's what happened for John. But you were actually born into the occult, mm -hmm. and your your family members and extended family members were practicing uh, satanic rituals when witchcraft, you were born. Witchcraft ceremonies, witchcraft. rituals, ceremony, witchcraft, witchcraft church, witchcraft demons, dedication ceremonies, uh, to the point that we I did 25 years of it. So wow. 25 years at the highest level, astral projecting. Mm. All that. Um, what is astro projecting when, like? When you make a contract with a demon and you leave the body and you go over regions and you curse the region, spirit of poverty, you put spirits of, uh, uh, say, premature death spirits over the region, so the Church of Jesus Christ won't be able to penetrate into the region and the atmosphere of the demonic, so we can control the region. It's like the the people in Mark chapter five, the demons told the told Jesus, "Don't let us leave the region," because mm -hmm. they were territorial mm -hmm. spirits. Right. They wanted to control the people. Right, and so what people don't understand that for those who don't know the Lord, that um, these curses, etc., can have an effect on them and them not even realize it because the only thing that is strong enough, and believe me, it is strong, is the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. uh, can deal with all of that in a second. And, um, but if you don't know that, 
then um, you can be affected by that. Mm -hmm. Right. And one thing about 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 demonic and curses, like we we see the life of David Wilkinson, right? His wife mm -hmm. Gwen, she beat cancer 28 times, spirit of infirmity. Mm -hmm. and, and these are infirmity spirits that attack our bodies, attack you know mindsets, uh, and all these things happen. And people call it the norm, and and people give into it instead of praying their way out of it. Okay, so as a small child, what do you remember about some of the things that went on in your home? Of course, I know there was abuse. Your father was an alcoholic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he was also heavily involved uh, in, in witchcraft. My father would send me to the Botanica. Botanica is a place that you go buy the ingredients of witchcraft, candles, you buy portions, you buy all these things. I would go buy the stuff for my dad, and my dad would do uh, rituals in the house. He would do ceremonies in the house. He would what kind of incense, rituals would he do? Incense in smoke, you know, thinking that you can chase demons out with that, or rituals, you're turning the living room on fire. He will take me and my brothers and pass us to the fire to purify us. He would lit up candles, he would buy flowers, he would do uh, cleansing ceremonies in the house. And all that stuff was in grass in the house and doctors in the house and all that tormenting stuff. You know, my mom would get beat up. My father would be an alcoholic. He was not set free from that. My father got killed at the age of 33. Hmm. He got oh shot, gosh. you know, in, uh, in uh, some social club. But. Uh, just a gruesome darkness in your house that What lingers. about the killing of animals? And killing animals, sacrifices animals. Did you see that happen? Cop. Oh, I did it plenty of times. I, oh, I killed goodness. so many animals but for the blood mm -hmm. because we, cop, we, we, we the devil copies the Old Testament mm -hmm. of, 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 of animal sacrifices, so he wants to do the same thing for his kingdom. Like I was going to demon church from 8 in the morning. I was going to demon church at the age of 8, and I was going from 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning to go to demon church from five in the morning. And what would happen during those services? Uh, we would learn how to communicate with the dark side. We know how to communicate with demons. We know how to communicate with, with principalities, territory spirit, marine spirit, water spirits. And then we make contracts and we learn the voices, we learn the colors, we learn the identity of these demons and they teach us all this stuff in, uh, in demon church. And as you learn these wow. things, you grow up into the demonic world and you start making contacts and rituals. So you, oh, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, but you didn't see those things as bad. You no, because it, it becomes, it, you know, you. I think, I think, I think today, you know, we see the life today, right, in, in society. You watch TV today. Becomes, yeah, TV. <laughs> everything becomes cultural. Right. See, the devil has an avenue between cultural, fashion, and culture. Yeah. Hmm. So the devil infiltrates those avenues, and now we say, well, my grandmother did it, my grandfather did it, my mama did it, so I'm doing it now, mm -hmm. you know? And it just becomes the norm. But you don't know that you, you're signing your, your rights, your life, your purpose, your identity to something that is a counterfeit. Yeah, yeah and you don't think that they're gonna, that their end goal is right. to destroy you. Yeah, they're saying they're destroy. gonna help you? No, they're gonna they're, they're say, we'll protect you, we'll bless you, we'll prosper you. We'll help you grow. We'll, we'll give you your power. best opportunity. Mm -hmm. We'll give you power. Yeah. We give you. We give you. Uh, uh, they will give you uh, an identity, and all oh, this wow. stuff is a false identity, false wow. power, yeah. false even tarot card readings. I, I can expose the tarot cards. I many times I invited Madeline Manson. I eat DMM and I said, "You want to mm -hmm. have a showdown with me in uh, your demon church?" I, I can show you Jesus is stronger. And, and, and these things, because the, the, the tarot card, they show you the past, the present, and the future. And the past means familiar spirits. They know your past. Mm -hmm. Present, they, 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 they monitor you. Your future, what happened is, they tell you all these things can happen, and they do happen, but it's not your future, because what they do, the demon is talking to the, to the medium or to the tarot card, the fortune lady, goes home with you. Yeah. So he performed all these things in your life. He torments these things in your life. And now you say, wow, my God, that did happen. Let me go back to the lady. I need to, I need to pay her so I can get these curses off me. So you drop 10 grand mm. on the lady. She called back the demon. Your life go back to normal. Wow. Right. How many people? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like a familiar, yes, well. it's like familiar <laughs> spirits wow. that, that are sorry. operating. So Control. I want to jump in because I want to be able to get to the book. So um, at some point, everything changed. Mm -hmm. You were immersed in darkness. Mm -hmm. You were not happy. Rafted. You were, you were not, you did not have peace. No. And uh, you actually died. Tell us, take us back to that day. In 1999, well, I, I got married in Halloween too. I had a demonic wedding in Halloween. Mm -hmm. I got married, Rachel wedding came in my Halloween. We got married in Halloween. So in 1999, I'm sitting in my bed having this, this, this dialogue with this guy called Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to serve you. Your church is weak. You have no power. You have no authority. You, you don't own anything. Now, Jesus owned the cat of Thousand Hills, and I'm telling him he don't own anything, but this is my mindset of the demonic side that I was in. But you also have to say that as a little boy, 
in your mind, the enemy had lied to you and told you, hey, Jesus wasn't here for you. Mm -hmm. At this point, this point, this when all these terrible things happened to you, mm -hmm. he lied to you. So yeah. you had an understanding perception of God that was not yeah, real. Yeah, it was not true. It was, it, was a, it was a false reality. Because that's what the devil gives you, a false reality yeah. of something that seemed real, but it's not. Yeah. So I had this false reality that Jesus didn't love me. You know, my mom got beat up by my dad. We lived in a broken home. We lived in the South Bronx. We lived in poverty. You know, we had to go to... Uh, we had to go to school to eat breakfast because there was no breakfast in the house. So, and then also, I was at a schoolyard. Pastor came down, prayed for a whole bunch of people, passed me by at the age of race. I said, well, Jesus don't love me. So I went home with this fragment that thought mm -hmm. mine that where well, the pastor passed me by, he prayed for everybody. Said, Jesus rejected me. My father doesn't love me. But the devil said, well, I love you. Mm -hmm. I'll take you. Yeah. And at age eight, I was inducted into the demonic world. And then uh, at age 99, at 35 years, uh, 25 years later, at age of 35, uh, Jesus is tugging on my heart. And I'm like, I heard the voice for Jesus for the first time in my living room. And it was shocking because I know the voice of demons, devil. I know the voice of principality, water spirit, marine spirit. And this voice was totally different. This came in the living room like an audible voice, but it, had, it sounded like a brook of water, but it had an authority that can shake the universe. Mm. And I know, and a week later, I'm sitting in bed having a discussion with Jesus. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to serve you. I want to stay as a devil worshiper. I don't want to serve you. And then I went to this, I was falling into this sleep, but I was passing away. Oh, wow. And all I said was, well, if you're bigger than my daddy, the devil, you show me today or leave me alone. And Jesus took the challenge. Boy, I went straight to hell. Mm. What happened? To, I, went, I was on this train hell bound. Everything was going so fast. Nothing on the earth had this kind of speed. And there was people on the train, the fear in the, the, fear in the train and the tormenting fear in the train was so deep and so engrafted in the train that people, you can see the faces, but we know we were going somewhere. There, there was no return. And then when the train hit hell, it was an explosion. When I stepped out of in hell, uh, I can, when you step in hell, the ground breathes like a person. Everything is alive in hell. Like the ground breathes, the fear in hell. It's not like the one here in New York, like not like here in the, in the you know, you're driving around, someone cuts you off, you panic for a second. The fear in hell wraps around you like a, like a mm. python. Mm. So when it's wrapped around you, uh, when it breathes, it, it torments you. So I, I got all these things on me. The devil shows up. He said, I loved you. I loved you like a son. I took you in. I show you all the secrets of my kingdom. I show you the demonic side. I showed you uh, how you, how you entrap uh, 21 rows to the dark side, how you entrap humanity into defensive codes and all this stuff. I show you rituals, ceremonies, astral projecting, blood sacrifices, contracts. I give you everything, power, money, all this stuff. And he said, I have to destroy you because you will tell the world about me. And then when he went to grab me, I mean, I have shorts and a t-shirt in hell. And when he went to grab me, the cross, the wooden cross of Calvary showed up. I mean, it was amazing. I couldn't have that in my pocket. The this wooden, wooden cross, cross of Calvary up. showed up. The one that Jesus the cross and Jesus wide, showed up. Hung up in hell. And the devil made contact. And the best way I could describe is like you take a piece of paper and you just drop it. He dropped like that. He couldn't deal with the power of the cross. Ooh. He just dropped. And then uh, I ran into the portals of hell. And this time, the second time he came out, he came out with the horns and the wing, but the wing, his body has stains because he fell from grace. So he went, he said, I have to destroy you because you'll tell the world about my, my secrets. When he went to grab me again, the cross came out, this mm. big giant wooden cross came out yeah. and dropped them, I mean, I mean, dropped them like nothing. That went back into my body like a lightning bolt and I came back to life. Mm. And that's when I knew that Jesus Christ had given me one opportunity. And you said, Jesus, I want you. I said, you didn't oh, even know how to pray. I didn't you know how just to pray. said, Jesus. I, didn't, no, I, said, I just said, Jesus, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I'm, in. Yeah. I'm in. I'm with you. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you want me to do, I'm with you. And I left $100,000 worth of witchcraft stuff behind, human bones. I had, I had my house look like a cemetery of stuff I had. And I left all that behind to follow a man that I couldn't see. Mm. Right? That man that I saw for 25 years. I switched daddies. Mm. And how did it change your life? Oh. From that moment, how did it change your I life? I mean, they, the demons came from me. Oh, they, they, they came, people from witchcraft from Haiti, Cuba, Miami, New York, the, the witchcraft on me to try to kill me for 30 days, tormented, choking me, picking me up out of my bed. I hear the demons come into the room, the, boat, the whole room goes cold, tormenting. But after that torment, 30 days, and I pray, I said, Lord, I, I would take prayers from this sister. Said, she said that word. That sister said that word. She said this word. I mix it together. I thought on the <laughs> devil, like a piece of furniture. What worked? Like What made him do Jesus. The word Jesus. Oh. 
There you go, folks. Every time you said Jesus, he yes. had to, they had to release me and leave the room. Yeah. yeah. For 30 How's days. that make you feel, Susie? Oh, it makes me want to cry. I just love, <laughs> when I you love hear, God. Just Jesus. Just Jesus. Yeah. So, what changed after the 30 days? After that, not, I didn't get tormented anymore. And, and then I said, Lord, why you let them torment me? Because I gave my life to you. And I, why would I be tormented? And, and he never answered. One day he answered. I was praying. I was there worshiping. And so he said, you want me to tell you now? And he said to me, I wanted to see how much you love me and how much you trust me, but they never lay hands on you again. Yes. I love it. You know, th this is the thing about God is that, you know, he's the only one that can know your heart. Mm -hmm. And you, some of you, you've judged yourself harshly because you've been involved in things you shouldn't be in. You're maybe even living a lifestyle now that you know is not pleasing to the Lord. And God is saying, I mean, he's calling out I mean, your heart is being pulled, just like yours was being pulled mm -hmm. to truth. And so I just want you to remember that during the, even the course of the rest of this program, all you have to do is say that name. Mm -hmm. Say the name mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Say, Jesus, I need you. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, he, he's stronger than any power of darkness. I mean, so much stronger. I mean, think about that scripture in, in the Bible where, where they're looking down at Lucifer mm -hmm. and they're like, is this the man yeah, yeah. <laughs> that did shake kingdoms? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you know, yeah. he's not nearly as powerful and scary as the world tries to make him. Yes, he is scary, but God's power is so much greater. Yes. Greater. I mean, washed away everything in my life. Now, you know, it's, it, maybe the small things don't matter to people, but it mattered to me. I remember when I was a devil worshiper, I was so embarrassed to hug my mom and kiss her and all that stuff. My mom's 76 now. And I, I, today I hug my mom, I kiss her, take pictures with her, I, I take care of her. My daughter, my, my relationship, my daughter's restored. Me and my daughter, were like, we like peanut butter and jelly. You know, we go together. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just the restoration of your life and, and your life has purpose. Now, it has, now you have the answer. You don't have to chase the question mark some more. Mm -hmm. And the answer is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not a religion thing, you know? And I was saying, I think I was saying earlier, that Christianity is the only God that chases you. In other religions, you have to chase after their God, mm -hmm. but Jesus is the one that chases after mm -hmm. you in Christianity. That's How beautiful good. is that? That's so good, Dorothy. Oh, oh my goodness, I'm speechless, but I'm so glad you said Jesus. There's yes. so much mm -hmm. power in the name, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm so happy to hear because listening to your story, yes. I'm like, oh my goodness, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> in my Amen. mind, I'm just thinking and thinking Amen. all these scriptures like, Whoa. So my question for you is, does that demon church still exist today? Oh, they're still around. They, I mean, they're on TV now. <laughs> they, they're, <laughs> they're in the movies. They're, they're everywhere. They're movies, yeah. television. They just had their first conference in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But you know what? You know, I learned spiritual warfare in a way that no other person knows and I'm, that I'm better. Mm -hmm. I just know because I was on the other side. So the thing in Boston, I shut down the atmosphere to Jesus Christ. I shut down the heavenlies in that area, in that region. So it's like Elijah. Elijah shut down the heavens, right? And the fact that when he called 440, 450 prophets showed up to, to battle Elijah, they performed, but there was no evidence that they, God exists. Mm -hmm. You see, and then Elijah called fire from heaven. How amazing is that? So the people know that the, 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 the false prophet, they were false. They had nothing to prove, no evidence. Mm -hmm. And I believe in my heart, as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to show the world that the only evidence, the true evidence that there is a God, is the name of Jesus Christ. And man, it's not a religion thing, it's a relationship thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think yes. that when we do spiritual warfare, and I show people that the only God that is real is Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Well, you know, I want to, I want to, what an incredible story. Yes. What a miracle that you are. But the Bible says God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. He loves you mm -hmm. just as much as he loves John. You mm -hmm. think John was immersed in the most darkness. Mm -hmm. So that's a word for you today that it's not too late. And you need to forgive yourself and ask God to forgive you. Okay. But some of you don't want to go to God because you think, well, I just got to get myself cleaned up. But no, no, you come just yes. as you are and God will meet you there. Well, I want to talk quickly about two different things that the, some of the entrapments mm -hmm. that um, lead to satanic bondage. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can touch on the, um, I think one of the big ones for me and that I see so often that people even that know the Lord um, open a door for the enemy, harboring unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we talk about that a lot at the table. We actually did a show with the ladies on um, unforgiveness and so many of you responded. It was just amazing. So. I always like to talk about that because that's really important to understand that even as believers, if we have unforgiveness, we open a door mm -hmm. to be entrapped by the enemy in a way that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. 
And it, and it, and it is, is a simple method, because the devil's into methods and systems. Mm -hmm. It's a simple method the devil uses to, to, to pour in, that poison into your heart, right? So the devil will use a spirit of offense, mm -hmm. right? So, because that's so, one of his attributes. That's yeah. his attributes, yeah, <laughs> that's not Jesus. He's offended because he got yeah, cast right. out of he heaven. He got kicked yeah. out, we took his job, we worship us now, we own the job now, mm -hmm. we have the true worship us, we're the redeemed. And so, so, so I hate you with a spirit of offense. Now you feel in your heart that why I'm offended. Uh, why that person did this, this to me? Why that person? You start thinking these things. Instead of letting it go and receive the gift of forgiveness and let it go, let it be. Mm -hmm. Or the Bible says, leave the gift at the altar, come across and make peace with your brother and your sister, whatever is right and wrong. Take that, take that, take that walk, and you see that the devil don't have unforg unforgiveness. The biggest thing in the body of Christ today, even everywhere you go, every time I do an altar call, I talk to people. Why are you hurting? Why are you fragmented? Why are you tormented? I have unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. How yeah. long you been that way? Ten years. What happened to the person? Well, the person died 10 years ago. Why are you yeah. still holding on to the person? Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's yeah, really that's a word true. for someone today that you wonder why a lot of these things are happening around in your family, in your life, because you have unforgiveness and God is saying, listen, you forgive. Remember what I've forgiven you for. Mm -hmm. And you can forgive easily those in the world that have hurt you. If it doesn't mean that it was right what happened, but it just means that it will set you free. I mean, forgiveness is more for you than even the person that offended you. So that's so important. Another thing you say is, um, uh, of course, experiencing emotional and physical trauma also opens a door. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that, but that can open a door. How mm -hmm. do you deal with that? I, I, think, I think in my life, you know, I, I focus on the good things that God has for me, and I minimize what the devil's trying to do. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I focus on what the devil's trying to do, and then I have to minimize what the Lord wants to do. Yeah. And the trauma could come from your childhood, like mine's. It could come from a, from a broken marriage. It could come from a, maybe a hurt or pain or divorce or even, 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 uh, uh, you know, loss of a child. Trauma comes in in many different facets, you know. Learn how to surrender that trauma to the Lord, give it to the Lord, and receive His goodness, His mercy, His grace, mm -hmm. and be healed, whole, and deliver, and walk the walk that God has for you. Let's talk about the weapons, because I want to know, mm -hmm. what do we have in our arsenal yes. to fight the enemy? And we'll, we'll start and just go around the table. Susie, we'll start with you. What's the most, one of the most powerful weapons we have in our arsenal? The Word of God. The Word of God. So word important. God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that uh -huh. I might not sin, sin against thee. So important. The Word of God is like the two-edged sword. You slice and dice the enemy, his lies. And that's what you slice and dice, the lies, the deception, the false yeah. realities, stuff that you don't have to believe and walk in it and walk into something that is not really your identity, right? So you yeah. use the Word of God because God promised God's Word is true. God is not a man that will lie. Mm. How awesome is that? Mm -hmm. You hold on to God's promises. Hey, listen, yes. you get into the promise line. Okay, so you, you really, I tell you, I want to encourage you to get a Bible and maybe get one that you can understand the, an, more in a modern vernacular and, and just begin to read the Word of God. You talked about that uh, when you went to hell that it was almost breathing, the ground was almost breathing. Breathing a human being. And I want to say person. that the Word of God is yes. alive. It's alive. Yes. And it's living. It's living. And it's truth. And, and it, will, it will change everything. I'm telling you, the Word of God is so powerful. What's another? Yes. What about speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues is you edify your inner person, right? Because, you know, the Bible says that there's a, there's a wall going on, right? You're outer man and you're inner man. They always at war with each other, right? The honor man is the carnal man, you know, the man that uh, uh, wants to still take over. So speaking yeah. in tongue, you edify your body, you edify who you are, you edify your mind, you build your inner man. And, and once the inner man is strong in the outer man, then he, the inner man runs the show, the one that's in the with the Holy that's Spirit. That's good. And so for people watching, Rebecca, who don't even understand what that is, is it, do you just ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit? Is it that simple? Yes, it really is that simple. It's just... You know, in the Bible and Acts, they would actually get saved, baptized, and filled with the Spirit all in one setting. Time. Yeah. Um, we segment it more these days, but the moment you get saved, you can get baptized, you can get filled with the Holy Spirit, and you just ask the Holy Spirit, you say, fill me, and then um, you just ask for your prayer language, and um, it's really just surrendering, yeah. mm -hmm. and a really easy way to actually do it, because I think a lot of times people get so caught up in their mind because they don't understand it, because it is something spiritual, mm -hmm. it's not of our flesh, is to just worship God, and as you worship Him, that language, you'll feel it come forth, and you just release your mouth, and you mean it just, it will come, and then you keep doing it continuously, because the Bible talks about stirring up that gift within you, and so it becomes a daily 
It really should be just a daily part of your life. And what's so beautiful about your prayer language is the Bible talks about in Romans is that you, the Holy Spirit knows what we need to pray for. And then he intercedes for us with groanings. And it's actually a language that even the devil doesn't understand. No, so it's all. actually so a powerful weapon. That's so good. Thank she you for- She is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> actually, she's my daughter. <laughs> but anyway, so thank you for um, sharing that. What's another weapon we have? The blood of Jesus. Yes, yes. that was what I wanted to ask about. <laughs> that that right there seals the deal. Yes. That's the power. Yes. That's stuff. the deal. Yeah. Because you know, I, to a lost generation, to a lost person, right? The blood of Jesus is is what the father used because we all we were we were we were uh, in the world, we were like foster kids, right? God came into the foster system of the world, signed, signed the contract to adopt you to the blood of Jesus Christ, a forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. And how easy it is that your sins can be forgiven to the blood of Jesus Christ and you can have a new life, right? That's yes. right. And, that, and that's, again, a word for you today. You feel like you've gone too far, but God is saying, you have not. I want to redeem you. I want to save you. I want to set you free. Um, I'll say uh, another one is prayer. Prayer. And praise and worship. We praise can't go worship. into that because we're just about yes. out of time. Those are two powerful tools. What else? I was going to ask about actually the prayer of repentance and the prayer of, what's the prayer of renunciation? You, you got two people, and I said this quick. You got, you got Peter and you got Judas, right? Mm -hmm. Two people cry. They, they betrayed this one per the same person they betrayed. Mm -hmm. One went to Pentecost and preached a message and saved three dollars, and one went to hell. And I teach Christians in the book that how to truly repent. When you truly repent, you yes. break you break the legal rights. But when you when you pray with remorse, the legal rights are still there. So you renounce, you let the devil know, I'm not doing this with you anymore. Yes. I'm renouncing it. Lord, I am truly repenting for forgiveness, for your mercy, and for the finished work of the cross. When you receive that, then you go to Pentecost mm -hmm. and you preach the message. That's so good. Amen. Cindy, your last one real quick. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, every knee has to bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord. Yes. And that's it. Even the devil, the demons, the witches, the warlocks, everybody has to bow down. To everybody. 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 I think world. about that song we sing, say the name <laughs> of Jesus. Yes. 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 Say yes. the name. Just say the name. That's it. Say the name. Yes. Well, we're out of time. I want you to remember that we do have an enemy that is seeking to destroy lives and destroy us. So it is imperative that we stand on God's truth and in his power to break the power of darkness around us. And Jesus did that. He gave us that power through what he did at Calvary. Mm -hmm. When he shed his blood for our sins, he overcame everything that the enemy would mm -hmm. ever throw at us. Yes. And so that's why it's important to say the name of Jesus. That's why it's important to plead the blood of Jesus over your family, over your children. That's why it's important to pray. That's why it's important to read the Word of God. All of these are weapons that God has given us. And if you're watching today and you or a loved one is struggling to break free from sin, witchcraft, identity issues, or addiction, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. We would love to pray with you and let you know God loves you, has a great plan for your life, and it's not over. It really is just beginning when you make that commitment to pray that prayer and say, Jesus, I need you yes. right now. I want to thank John for joining us at the table. I want you to be sure to pick up a copy of his book, Fire Prayers. It's available now. And for more, you can visit him online at johnramirez.org. Such an incredible story. If today's uh, conversation has impacted you, we want to hear about it. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We're so excited to hear what God is doing in your life. Let us know. And I know there's some of you right now, you sense the presence of the Lord. You haven't been able to stop watching. And uh, that's because uh, the Holy Spirit is reaching out to you and opening your heart up for the first time to receive Jesus. So don't be afraid to say yes to Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, John. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.